Morning. Couple of messages and stuff that I've been getting. Asking me, Philly, what's chemo like? I'm about to go on chemo. Right. Um, so let's talk about it. Um, the chemo for testicular cancer is mostly BEP, which is bleomycin, etoposide, and so splatin, or EP, which is BEP without the bleomycin. So it's etoposide and so splatin. Or you can have a single dose of carboplatin, which is relatively new, and that's usually for stage one. Seven owner. So if you used to have stage one seven owner, they say we're going to give you one blast of carb plan. It's usually a preventative measure. And it's pretty new. So all the research is saying whether it works or not, it, you can't really trust it at the minute. But it looks like it's working. Okay. Uh, we're not going to talk about surveillance. Uh, we're talking about chemo. Um, now, like me, when I first had it, all those years ago, I didn't know what chemo was, rather did it. I thought people who had cancer and they went on treatment were blasted by radio beams. And I thought that's what chemo was, under another word. So I thought I was expecting to go into a machine and be blasted with uh, radiation, blah, 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 whatever. So it's quite crazy that we don't know how they do it. What they actually do with testicular cancer chemo is via a drip on a machine into your, your arm or wherever they find a good vein so with a single dose of carboplatin it'll be plugged into your arm or your arm there wherever they find and you're in there for uh, a day and I've never had that but I know plenty of lads who have and some say for the next two weeks uh, they start to feel very fluish uh, like they've got a bit of a hangover but within two weeks they feel fine again but uh, maybe ask in our forum how they got, how they got on and if there's any side effects. Um, I'm not sure. I've never had it, but it's 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 good stuff and uh, it's relatively new. So let's let's see in the future whether it does what it what it is intended to do. Because Seminona is a slow. It can be years and years later that it shows up again. Um, but it's all looking good. Most of the lads I know have had carboplatin one dose. All doing fine. Years later. Which is a good sign. But that's your single dose for, for Seminona. Uh, anything else, stage two, stage one of Seminona, or non-Seminona, Seminona, stage two, and... Um, non seminona stage one that's shown signs of it starts to spread will go on BEP bleomycin topicides of splatin now what's that like oh hang on yeah BEP or EP now BEP is bleomycin topicides of splatin and E have I said this already <laughs> uh, e, uh, EP is uh, it's topicide and splatin they take the bleomycin away but give you more another round so it's 4 EP or 3 BEP if that makes sense uh, chemo people say Philly you know just in the pub or whatever what's chemo like I can't describe it um, I don't want bullshit it's horrible it's, it's absolutely horrific I'm not going to say, oh, it's nice, oh, it was nothing, oh, I pissed it. I didn't, it was horrible. And most of the lads who've had advanced chemo and all the chemo know that you can't say, oh, I pissed it, it was easy, it was nothing. It's not, it's horrible. So, um, but you can make it bearable. And when you come out the other end, which you will, uh, in a year's time, well, you can laugh about it then, sort of, I hope. But, firstly, it's on a drip, right? So before you go in for your chemo, what they're going to do is give you a kidney test uh, to make sure your kidney's up to scratch, and a general check up to make sure your heart and all that. Well, they should do. Some don't. They just plug you in. Um, some doctors go, well, you've got to have it, so... Uh, a lot of lads go in for the first because we've let, let let's um, 
with BEP, it's usually you go into hospital for three to four days and you're permanently plugged into this chemo. And um, same with EP and BEP, right? We're talking about BEP and EP from now on, right? So you're plugged in and you basically sit in your bed or walk around with your pole, right? For the first three to four days. And you feel all right. You feel you feel a bit tired, and you you start to feel a bit nauseous because it's a f- foreign liquid coming in. But overall, it, it's it's not too bad. The first week, I mean, you go out, you finish, and someone comes to pick you up, and you go home, and your hair's still there, and you think, "Was that it? Cool, not too bad." Yeah, everyone thinks that the first week, and then they get home. And within a couple of days, you start to feel crap, you know, um, just extremely tired and and and, and um, sort of nauseous and just you know a bit. Oh, I don't feel very well. You can't describe it. And if you have BEP, you go back in for a booster a week later, which is a day case where they boot, give you a boost of chemo for a couple of hours, and then send you home again. Uh, so that's one cycle. One cycle is a week, and then a, a week or so break, then a day booster, and then a little bit of recovery is had, and then you go back in for round two. So one round, yeah? So if they say you're on three rounds, you've got to do that three times, obviously. And with EP, if you're on four, you've got to do it four times. But with EP, you don't have the booster. Right? You just have the hospital stays. So, um, second round for me, Right, I went into the hospital, and because I thought the first one wasn't too bad, the second round they plugged me in. So I went through the week of of walking around the hospital, uh, not sleeping very well because I need my own bed, and I need a telly on to fall asleep too. <laughs> so it wasn't not to do with the chemo; it was just, oh God. Um, and I left after a week, and the second lot absolutely knocked the crap out of me really did uh within within a week of the second round my hair starts to fall out and it doesn't it doesn't fall out in bits you can go and pull a big clump out i'd already shaved my head but it starts to grow back um but i noticed i got in the shower and i had sort of like uh a mod, a mod skinhead uh and i put shower gel on my hand I went like that in my head, and I sneezed. <laughs> like, so I went, and I looked at my hand, and I looked like I had a hairy hand, and I looked up in the mirror, and you could basically see a hand handprint on my head. So it comes out, like, really quickly, not just a little bit. And you'll notice, right, you'll, you'll be eating your, your tea or whatever, and, and you'll see bits of hair coming down. So it comes out very quickly. That's just after stage, just after round two. Feelings wise, um, it's when it hits. It's round two. It's you start to get out so out of breath. Even a small task like going up the stairs to the loo. I used to go up the stairs to the loo, get to the toilet and be so out of breath, have a wee, and then need to lie down on the toilet floor for 20 minutes to look and get up again and go down there's some it does help if you're fitter obviously I'm not the fittest person so a fitter person might might not get as tired uh, maybe ask some of the fitter lads on the forum um, the second round second round hits and you, you, f- you feel tired but the tips for it is to drink plenty of water because water helps the chemo out of your body and another big tip for chemo is to try and keep eating right keep your strength up right and they say eat healthily but we'll get onto that lately later yes eat healthy if you can but you are going to get constipated right so um remember to maybe ask the doctor for something like a laxative but you go back in again for that booster, um, 
and then you're out again. So it's the same again. You spend that next week or so waiting to go in for round three, just very tired and very, very um, out of breath. And you start, you probably, you might start to lose weight. Some lads actually put weight on, but that's more to do with steroids. And some lads uh, lose a lot of weight. When I first had it, we we had no steroids. Uh, we had we had anti sickness tablets, but the, we didn't have the injection like they give you now in the in the stomach, which helps to um, get the blood and red and white cells growing quicker, which is common now, which I believe helps with the recovery. Um, but um, yeah, it, 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 it's it's hard. Third round is the hardest out of all of them I think because well maybe not because you're, you're feeling so terrible anyway that the third round you just just extends that yeah so maybe the round two is, is the worst you get and round three just, just prolongs it I mean I didn't personally feel any worse after round three I, I started to feel a little bit better from round, after round two but then they plug you in again and knock you back down to low but it's important um to, to drink water and eat and rest up don't whatever you, the important thing is you will pick up any bug any sort of cold if somebody comes out i know people want to come and visit your family and that and they want to come and see if you're all right and you want to say hello and but say to them on the phone have you got a bug have you got any viruses or cold don't come come and see me in a couple of weeks or next week because you will pick it up right your immune system is at rock bottom so um Lovely Ryan came to see me in hospital with tonsillitis and forgot to tell me he had tonsillitis. So two days after I finished my chemo, I went home and I got tonsillitis. I went, where's this come from? And I said to Ryan, Chris, I've got tonsillitis. He goes, yeah, I had that when I come to see you the other week. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> anyway, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so after you finish round three, um, rest up, rest up. Let your body recover. If, if you're on round three rounds, you're finished, right? But it's important that you don't try and prove to everyone you're Superman. A lot of lads go on a, because they've had cancer, they go on a massive health drive. Um, I'm going to go out and run marathons. Yeah, wait, wait a bit, right? Because I, I say chemo is like a battery, right? Let it charge up slowly. Don't half charge it. Wag it down to zero again by doing too much, and then that battery's got to recover again and again and again, and then you zap it down to zero. When what you need is to let it charge nice and slowly, right? You you'll know when you feel better. If you want to go for a walk, fine. Don't go too far. Right? If you want to go for a drive, don't go too far. I actually got in the car once, started the car up, and fell asleep with my foot on the clutch. Somebody come out, come out, knock on the window. You're right. What? An hour later, with the engine running, with my foot on the clutch. And I'm not lying. It's a true story. So let your body recover. Drink loads of water. Eat what you want. Yeah. What they say is what I was going to make a point. They say eat healthy, right? But part most of the chemo battle is how you feel, right? So if you want to go and get a kebab or a pizza, and you know it'll cheer you up, go and get one, right? Get one. If you're feeling a bit crap and pissed off here, I just fancy a big kebab. Go and get it. Right? It might, it probably will make you constipated because your, your stomach takes a kicking from the chemo. But nothing wrong with bits of, you're sitting on the toilet straining with all on it. But just for that hour eating that kebab or whatever, it makes you feel better. It makes you put a big smile on your face. Oh, that's lovely. You know, have it. But it, it, it does help to eat healthfully, fruit, veg, right? One thing I did notice, you get very acidy, stomach acidy. So try and avoid like really acidy stuff like orange juice and stuff. And most lads suffer really badly with the stomach. I have constipation or stomach pains or stomach cramps. And I think a lot of it is to do with what you're putting in your stomach. So, you know, salads, fine. Um, but keep drinking that water. But after round three... 
it's a good a good uh, I'd say a good four to six weeks till you're feeling reasonably okay where well, you can maybe consider going out for the day but it's up to you if you're a fit person you probably recover quickly uh, some of the fitness freaks on the Czech and Lads forum will handle recovery better because of the fit marathon runners and stuff if you're a little fatty like me um, it might probably take a bit longer but it does get easier and it does get better um, you will find maybe ringing in your ears um, that's caused by the splatter pins and needles in your fingers and hands uh, it's called neuropathy now that's common if you've had BEP or EP that's common um, and it can last a while or it might not go away um, it tends to be w or worse just after you've finished your chemo for the first year pins and needles in your hands and, and fingers and mine I can only see off my first experience it went away slowly and it was it was worse than the cold um, but it got less so or maybe I just got used to it but it gets less so so um, but see your doctor there are tablets that help and with the ears you really need to keep an eye <laughs> you need to keep an ear to your ear because I'm near enough deaf now because I've had it twice right I mean hearing is down to 10% or something but the, fir the first time you get a lot of ringing in your ears but I'd say after six months go and get a hearing test right and see how it is because it can affect your hearing most lads are fine but some can have can get a bit of deafness okay um but the overall experience of chemo is horrific yes but it will get better um the lads of the forum below who've had a lot of chemo can probably comment how they feel about chemo but EP basically is the same, but without the bleomycin, but you have four rounds, right? And that's usually older lads, because bleomycin is quite tough on older fellas. And when my cancer came back a couple of years ago, I, I had four rounds of EP, which was more than my first one. And to be honest, I found it horrific, but not as hard as the bet. Maybe psychologically, it's because I knew what was coming. I, I remember when they told me, I was sat with Professor Clark in, in the in the office. You're going on chemo. I said, I'm not. He goes, you're going back on chemo. I said, I'm effing not. And he was sat looking at me. <laughs> I said, can't you cut it out? He goes, no, you've got to have chemo. I said, you're not, you're not giving it to me. I said, I'm not coming back. And I, and I nearly walked out. But then Professor Clark basically said, well, you're going gonna to snuff it, man. And I went, all right. Um, okay. And I was absolutely mortified, not because I had cancer, because that's life, right? So that's to go back on chemo again. Um, but I did it, uh, and that was four rounds, and so that was, what, two months' worth. And it's not as hard. If you're on EP, it's not as hard as Beth. But, yeah, is it because I knew what I was used to? I think it's because the bleomycin is, is pretty is pretty ruthless in Beth. And an EP, because you don't have it, maybe the chemo is a lot easier. But you do, you you have four rounds rather than three. So you, to, to make up for the fact that you're not using bleomycin. Now I found that EP was exactly the same as BEP, where you're just knocked out, tiredness, out of breath. Oh, another thing with chemo, and everybody will say this. Your sleep patterns go to crap. You can, your body doesn't know whether it's day or night. You can sleep in the day and be out cold and then wake up at one in the morning and be wide awake and you end up watching telly till four or five in the morning and as everybody's getting up, you're like tired again. Or you can, you can be awake at all hours. I found myself watching Netflix and, and videos and stuff at stupid o'clock because I was wide awake. So that's another thing. You, you, your body, your body clock goes non-existent. Um, but yeah, keep drinking loads of water throughout. Um, chemo is not nice, lads. I, 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 I won't lie to you and say it's easy. Um, 
especially the the BEP and the the EP, the the the, the, ra- the long rounds. Uh, I can't comment on carbo platinum because I've never had it, but um, I'd show you a photo. But it's it's not nice. But you'll get through it. Anybody who's looking after you, right? They're obviously going to be a bit worried and and see you looking ill and losing weight and going pale. But um, as long as they keep you fed, as long as they keep you watered, um, they'll be fine. But that's how how you react physically and emotionally to chemo, or how any man does. It's it's quite hard to be quite active and, and bouncy to all of a sudden be be bedridden for a long periods of time and and you do get a bit paranoid actually if you go to the shop and you've got obviously a woolly hat on and people haven't seen you for weeks or months and they don't even know you that you've got cancer and you're on chemo and you walk into a shop and a lot of them go oh you don't look very well and you go oh yeah i've got cancer I'm on chemo and they they don't know what to say to them they sort of like go, oh uh, right, uh, what do you want? Do you want a do you want a, do you want a bussy, mate? And they say, <laughs> they don't know what to say. So uh, I remember if mates come round to see you and that. And one of the biggest things is is people say to me, people don't care about me. I'm on chemo, and all my mates disappeared. And blah, 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 blah. well, you know, do you know what it is? A lot of them don't know what to say. They're so used to seeing happy you and jokey you and jovial you that they go into the house or whatever see you on a bed think they probably think you're going to die as most of us know with tested cancer you survive but they probably think Christ this could be the last time I'm going to see Philly you know or whatever and they go in and they go well you know they don't know what to say do they say how's the treatment or how's your cancer no they're not going to say that right they're going to come in and go oh uh, yeah Uh, they fucking haven't lost again didn't they or uh, you know or you know uh you know, somebody got knocked out in boxing. You know, it. They, they don't know what to say. You know, and and, it, and there's an, don't get angry about that. You know, they probably walk out going to say the right thing. You know, you know, they're not gonna. You don't know what to say, and you wouldn't know what to say. Well, you probably would now. Like you've had the treatment of cancer, you'd know exactly what to say to someone. But you probably wouldn't know what to say if your mate had cancer and you went in, went in to visit him in hospital or at home. You, you'd go and sit there and go, all right. You stand sitting there, bald on the couch, out of breath. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. You're like, what the fuck? What do I say now? I can't go anywhere. You know. So don't get angry with them. They just don't know what to say, and especially men. Women are better. At it. They'll come in and make them. They've got their motherly instinct. Will kick them out. Maternal is it? Maternal? A paternal? I don't know. But um. Lads were useless, right? So don't get, you know, don't sit there going, I wish four more people would come to see me. They'll be worried about you and they'll be gutted for you, but they probably don't know how to act. Especially men, we're terrible, terrible. So, well, that's just my, my, my advice on that. But with chemo, lads, to sum it up, it's absolutely horrific. I'm not lying to you. And some people will say, you shouldn't be saying that, Phil, you're scared. I don't lie, it's horrible. Right. I'm not a nice, fancy, politically correct leaflet you get out of a hospital. It's horrible. But you'll get through it. Right? And I've never, ever had anybody message me saying, you were wrong, Phil, it was easy. Right? Some handle it better than others. Again, mostly it's a psychological battle. The psychological battle is just as hard as the physical battle. So if you go in psychologically prepared, I this is going to be horrible, then it's not a shock. If I said, chemo's easy and it's great, and you'll love it, you'll message me saying, Phil, you are a liar because it's horrible. So I'll tell you the truth, right? Unlike some. But if you're about to start chemo, right? Or you just start chemo, or you just finish chemo, or if you've ever had chemo, I salute you. Because we know, right? And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a secret society. That's hard. <laughs> but good luck with it. Drink loads of water. Eat if you can. Try and stay positive. You're going to feel like crap. You're going to be tired. You're going to lose your hair. You'll probably pick up bugs. 
if your temperature starts going up, keep an eye on your temperature because you can get infections, especially on from the BEP, EP less so, but if you've got the BEP, you can, you're more prone to uh, infections. Usually within the first first round when your body starts, Christ, what's this? A lot of lads' temperatures go up and they end up back in hospital. Keep an eye on your temperature. And if it gets, if you start to feel hot, like you've got a really bad flu and young chemo, ring the hospital, get back in. You might have to have a blood transfusion or some sort of antibiotics, but that's normal, right? Don't panic. I hear it a lot, especially with BEP, not EP, but BEP. The first you start to get some bugs or temperature changes and stuff. Anyway, I'm prattling on, right? You need any advice, come into the forum where all those lads are, or private message me. Uh, if you're in Clatterbridge or the local area, give me a shout. I can come over and uh, say hello. Um, but yeah, you'll get through it. It's tough, but you'll get through it. Get a. Oh, you should be careful. Have the kebab. Right? You're going to get constipated whether you're on salad or kebabs. If it puts a smile on your face and it cheers you up, have it. Right? Alcohol! No. Right? Some lads do. So I'm going to have a pint. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit against alcohol when you're on chemo. Keep off it. Yeah. Um, you got enough problems on your plate. Some... And, I used to say, yeah, I have a pint. But then a few, few lads who started to rely on it a bit too much. And it didn't didn't help things overall. Um, somebody asked, some people asked me, cannabinoid oil? I don't know. I've never had it um, to help with the chemo. I don't know. I've never had it. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm not going to say, don't take it. I don't know. Um, another thing is a lot of lads contact me who say will cannabis or um, get rid of my cancer can I just say I don't know but I've known a few lads who've had it and it didn't work uh, only a few um, but I'm not, I won't dismiss it um, I don't read everything you see in the press if they come out next week and say it cures cancer and there's proof of that. And the health minister and whoever, blah, 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 let's forget about all this political stuff that they're trying to keep everybody. No, let's just say whoever finds the cure of cancer is going to be very rich. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. If you want to go and try it, fine. You know, you're, you're a big boy. But don't panic yourself into it because thinking it's going to get rid of your cancer because... In 99% of the time, the chemo does. And but the chemo that they use is plant-based. Apart from splatum, which is a, a metal. The chemo that gets rid of the cystic is plant-based. Which is why I won't dismiss can cannabis oil. Right. A lot of people think bet chemo. You don't get me wrong. It's very strong and nasty poisonous stuff. But it comes from plants. Or a derivative. They muck around with it a bit. Don't get me wrong. So, you know... When someone's going to say, have you tried that cannabis oil, that horrible chemical chemo that they're giving you? Well, that chemo comes from plants and metals. But, you make your own, you, you do your own research on that. Um, but anyway, rattling again. Um, yeah, good luck with it. And if you need a rant, get in touch. But, you'll get through it. And your hair comes back thicker, sometimes curlier. My baby hair as well. Remember when your baby was born, it was all soft and you could smell baby hair. That's when your hair comes back, like brand new hair. I started to go bald again not long after. 